Giovanni Gallardo continues to provide the things the Rangers had hoped for. Innings, stability, and durability. He's been hit by hard luck at times this season with a lack of support from the offense and the defense. But like his team, he's trending upward. 2-0 in his last three starts with a 150 ERA. Tonight, Gallardo and the Rangers look to win their seventh straight series when they beat the Oakland A's next. Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T Ubers TV. Now the off and on rain that visited the Bay Area this afternoon and this morning has left and it's a beautiful evening for baseball. The Rangers and the A's get set to get things underway for game two of this three game series. And welcome in everyone along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us on this Wednesday night of Ranger baseball. Rangers trying to make it two in a row over the A's and win another series and they are turning to Yamani Gallardo tonight, Tom. He's been good last several times out. He's been really good his last three times out, Buzz, and I think in his 11 starts, he's provided the Rangers exactly what they were looking for when they got him in the offseason. Veteran presence in the rotation who gives you a predictable performance every five days. In his last three starts, he's won two of them. He had a no decision in one of them. His ERA is 150. He hasn't given up an extra base hit in three starts, and opponents are only hitting 169. So in his last three starts he's been extremely tough to hit he's won a couple of those games the Rangers are going to count on him continuing that tonight there you go he'll try to keep things going also and defeat the A's for the first time in his career so Gallardo and the Rangers getting set to take it to Oakland here tonight we'll be back with the starting lineups in the first pitch right after this on Fox Sports Southwest you buy your Texas Ford dealers. 
Visit your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, Uverse TV. Uverse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. There may be fog over the Golden Gate, but here at uh, O.Co. Coliseum, a beautiful evening for baseball. Before we get things underway, let's head down and check in with John Radigan. John? Yeah, Buzz, you and Tom talking about the great numbers Giovanni Gallardo has been putting up. He's trying to make it three straight wins in the same season for the first time since 2013 and feels like he likes his chances the way he's been pitching. No, I'm having a pretty good stretch right now. I've been feeling pretty good all year. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, finding that good rhythm and, you know, being aggressive in the zone, which I think I've, I've been able to do that at the past starts. Gallardo also has a, a two-game winning streak on the road on the line. Last time he pitched on the road was in Yankee Stadium, where he was victorious. So he's going to try to keep that road success going here at O.Co. tonight. Guys, back up to you. All right, John, thank you. And now Tom's going to tell you about the uh, Southwest Airlines Texas Rangers starting lineup that will face Jesse Hahn. It'll be much like last night's lineup. Delano DeShields will lead off in left field, followed by Shin Su Chu in right field. Prince Fielder is the DH hitting third. Mitch Moreland will bat fourth and play first base. Joey Gallo is at third. Elvis Andrews bats sixth at shortstop. The center fielder is Leonis Martin. Adam Rosales gets the start tonight. He'll play second base. And batting ninth is the catcher, Robinson Chirinos. And that lineup will be facing the 25-year-old right-hander out of Connecticut and Virginia Tech, and that is Jesse Hahn. Hahn, uh, when he is on, he's an extreme ground ball pitcher. He kind of slings the ball up there, has good sinking action to it. Also throws a couple of different breaking balls, but a fairly basic pitcher, and Rangers will try to stay patient with him early and take the ball the other way if they find him uh, getting that pitch down in the strike zone. They can get the ball up a little bit and not try to pull him. So that's... Would be the general idea hitting against Jesse Hahn. And uh, Delano De Shields will try and get that uh, underway tonight and, and again ignite the Ranger offense. Look, they look at the Oakland defense tonight, presented by Steele. In the outfield, a little bit different than last night. Sam Fold in left, Billy Burns in center, Josh Reddick in right. Max Muncy out of uh, Baylor University at first base, Ben Zobrist and Marcus Simeon up the middle. Brett Lowry at third, and Stephen Vogt again behind the plate. So ready to go. Rangers come in trailing the uh, Houston Astros by just two games. This is as close to the top as the Rangers have been since you know, the last week in April. The first pitch to Delano De Shields is inside for ball six. one. The Shields hitting at 270. No home runs, 11 driven in. Again, in that leadoff spot, and he has been up there now for the uh, last 16 consecutive ball games. Five bunt base hits, ties him for the American League lead with his teammate, Leonis Martin. Gets one on the fists and rounds a foul outside third. Delano's going to have to check that bat, and make sure it's still in one piece. Well, the Rangers have won eight of their last ten. They are 12 and, or I should say 20 and 12 on the road. That is the best record and the most wins away from home in Major League Baseball. Big slow curveball is outside of by Han. It's two balls and two strikes. Han, a very tall, slender right-hander, comes back to the plate. The ground ball into the hole. It's short. It's off the glove of Simeon. And the Shields will be aboard. Now, Simeon, who leads Major League Baseball in most errors by a shortstop with 19. And we'll see how that's going to be scored. That will be his 20th error of the year. And one thing that happens when he hits us, when the Shields hits a slowly hit Man, ground ball, the infielder has to charge it. And he knows he has to be quick. And that can lead to an error. I think a different runner, you maybe play back just a little bit, get the hop, make the play. But with the shields running, you don't have time to do that. Yep. And that forces the infielder. Speed kills, especially when you're trying to defend it. It's uh, a devastating weapon. Here's Shin Su Chu. Takes downstairs for ball one. Chu at 246, eight home runs. That is second on the ball club to Prince Fielder with 29 runs driven in. That is also second to fielder. 
one for three in the uh, few matchups that he's had against Jeffy Jesse Hahn. Check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. That appeal down to third base umpire, and it is a strike. So Han has a lot of movement on his fastball. You could see to shoot to chew right there how that ball just moved down and away, caused him to try to check his swing, moved right out of the strike zone. That's why he will get a lot of ground balls. Why he's very tough on right-hand hitters. We saw it to the shields. He can run that in on the fists. Oh, but I don't. Oh, how in the world he avoided that tag going back and Max Muncy signaling uh, over to the A's bench. He wants uh, him to take a look at that play at first. Pretty nice quick move. But he missed his arm. He tagged his shoulder. Did he tag his shoulder before he got back to the bag? Let's see. I don't know. Can't tell. And they're going to go ahead and issue the challenge. So right out out of the shoot we're going to have a, a challenge at first base the crew chief uh, Bill Miller who is also the first base umpire along with Doug Eddings the second base umpire will come back and get the headphones on and uh, check in with replay command center back in New York I don't know how Delino even came close to getting back he'd already he'd committed himself towards second base but he's so quick and agile he hasn't tagged him yet uh, yeah, I think they're going to win that one. Out right there. There's the angle. They're going to win that one. Yeah, I believe you're right. And, he and the answer to the question is he didn't get <laughs> yeah, back. He didn't get back. <laughs> he was definitely going, and Han looked like he had a nice, quick, accurate throw to first base, and it caught him right as he was stepping towards second base, and he wasn't able to get back. Didn't take long for the... Uh, Umpire in charge of this game in New York to make that determination. So the uh, call is overturned. Delano De Shields caught on a pickoff. See how far he is toward second base. He's scrambling, but couldn't quite make it. If that was a left handed first baseman, he would have been out by three feet. Now, Chu, it's one fairly hard, but right out to Zobra is the second baseman. Two gone. Well, Han gets a lot of double play grounders. He's had 10 of them this year. And that's one thing that plays to his advantage with men on base. Severe ground ball pitcher that can lead to double plays. Only given up three home runs all year. He's pitched much better to right hand hitters than he has left hand hitters. Well, here's Prince Fielder now with the base is empty. A 354 average for Prince. That is still best in the American League, second best in baseball. Leading the American League in hits. And also second in baseball, D. Gordon, over with the uh, Miami Marlins, leading the major leagues in average and hits. There's a strike to Prince. One and one. Fielder with 10 home runs, 41 RBI. In the last 26 games, a 377 average. One one pitch on the way. I chopper over the mound. Simeon on the first base side of second. Throws the first, and that'll do it. For the Rangers, no runs, no hits, an error, and nobody left after a half inning. Rangers nothing. A is coming up.
going to tell you about the Amica Oakland A's lineup tonight. Billy Burns starts it off. He's the center fielder. Josh Reddick bats second. Ben Zobrist at second bats third. Stephen Vogt is the catcher hitting fourth. Billy Butler, the DH, is fifth. Brett Lowry, the third baseman, is sixth. Max Muncy gets the start at first base. Marcus Semien will hit eighth. And the left fielder, Sam Fold, bats ninth. And that lineup will face Giovanni Gallardo. We'll give you a scouting report on him in just a moment. Billy Burns, a 3.03 average, takes high and outside for ball one. Our progressive scouting report. Well, he has been the model of consistency, has Giovanni Gallardo, and he will try to take advantage of Oakland's aggressiveness. We saw it last night. A lot of hitters uh, going up there swinging early in the count. And Giovanni, if he has his good command, can take advantage of that as well as anyone. Five and six, although the last two times out, he has been extremely consistent. Two balls, no strikes to Billy Burns, a speedster at the top of the Oakland order. There is a strike to make it two and one. Burns a couple of home runs, eight RBI. One for four against Gallardo in past matchups. I mentioned Gallardo has never defeated the Oakland A's. He's 0-3 with a 648 ERA. Chopper to third, off the glove of Gowie, retrieves it, then throws it away. Backing it up is Rosales, but there's a lot of room over there. And Burns at second on the throwing air. A pretty good job by Joey Gallo to go up for the rebound and pull down the board. But by the time he uh, recovered, he knew he had to hurry. Uh, he recovered in time to make the play, even with Burns running. It would have taken an accurate throw. He's got a strong arm. Just wasn't able to make the accurate throw. So it's going to be an infield single for Burns and an error to allow him to go to second base. Josh Reddick now steps in. And takes a tailing fastball for strike one. Reddick hitting a 306 for the year. Eight home runs and 32 driven in. And as we mentioned last night, Almost all of the damage that Reddick has done offensively has been against right-handed pitching. 371 average against right-handers. It seems like Giovanni has had more than his share of that kind of play. A tough play in the infield. A lot of them have gone for base hits. And a lot of them have led to runs. And he's had to pitch around a lot of situations like this. Now that's a play that I think if you ask Joey, he had to jump high to catch it, but it wasn't a hard hit ball. He'd probably say he thought he should have come down with it. He didn't have much time to throw, knowing how Burns runs. Mm -hmm. And I think he might have had him at first base with an accurate throw, but it's going to be very close. Yeah, not an easy play. It's a base hit. But not a hard hit ball. Two balls and a strike to Reddick. To right, that's a base hit. Burns had to hold up to make sure it was going to fall, and he advances to third. But the A's now with runners at the corners and nobody out for Ben Zobrist. And while we have a second here, we'll show you the rest of the Ranger defense delivered to you tonight by Chicken Express. In the outfield, you saw Shinsu Chu in right field. He handled that last base hit. Leonis Martinez center the line of the shields and left. Mitch Moreland at first, Rosales and Andrews up the middle. Joey Gallo at third, and uh, Robinson Chirinos behind the plate. A two on, nobody out. Ben Zobrist, the switch hitting infielder, outfielder for the uh, Oakland A's up there. Zobrist is back in the lineup after a couple of weeks for having a knee surgery. It's a little bit low for ball one. Dobras three out of five against Giovanni Gallardo. One of those three, a home run. Rangers playing in the infield back. They will give up the run for an opportunity to turn two. Good fastball to the outside corner. Adrian Johnson, by the way, calling the balls and strikes tonight. Veteran umpire and 
giving a little bit on the outside corner. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch. Two balls and a strike. Tom, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the errors that have have uh, occurred behind Giovanni, and you know, part of it goes back to his, his changing the, uh, I guess, the manner that, that he pitches, and getting a lot more ground balls than he used to. And he's had the misfortune of having some of those ground balls turn into errors, but uh, getting almost 50% ground balls which for him is a lot. Never had been much of a ground ball pitcher in the National League, and the last couple of years he's uh, kind of made that transition. The most ground balls in the American League, of course, Dallas Keuchel, the most by quite a bit. There's a strike to Zobrist. It's two and two. They're three and two, excuse me. No, so full count with nobody out. We'll see if uh, Bob Melvin turns Josh Reddick loose at first base. Gallardo checks him. And now time call. Zobrist hitting third. He'll be followed by the catcher, Stephen Vogt. Now Gallardo has the sign he wants. He will drive Reddick back with a throw. Infield shading Zobrist a couple of steps to the right. Outfield in a similar fashion. Chopper out to Rosales. They're going to be able to turn this over. The run score is not in time to get Zobrist. As Rosales elected to go for the long flip back to Elvis at second base instead of making the tag. And it's a fielder's choice for the first out, but in to score Billy Burns. And the A's take a 1 nothing lead. Yeah, I think his best. I couldn't tell if he had the angle to tag him. If he did have the angle to tag him, that would have been the way to go. As it is, it's not a hard hit ball. He has to throw it all the way back. I, I think if he ran right straight at Reddick, Reddick couldn't have gotten out of the way. And then he would have had a nice short throw to first base and might have had a better chance to get Zobrist. So an RBI to Ben Zobrist, his 15th run driven in. The breaking ball is a bit outside the boat. Stephen Vogt at 291 average. He is two for four against Gallardo in past matchups. Vogt, uh, pretty good offensive downturn of late. Fastball for a strike. He was one for three last night, and then came on the heels of going one for 20 in the last road trip that the uh, A's just completed. Still has given the Rangers fits. The 339 career hitter is Ranger pitching. Two and one now. Bernardo already up to 17 pitches and just has one out here in the first inning. Double play would do nicely right about now. Blowing outside, three and one. Oakland's lost four in a row coming into this game. They've only scored nine runs in those four games. Not been swinging the bats very well. On the board early, though, in this one. Got five streaks of at least four losses this year in a row. That's out of play, and it fills the count to Stephen Vogt. The vote hitting fourth. He'll be followed by the designated hitter, Billy Butler. Gallardo, a new baseball in hand, back up on top of the rubber, getting set to throw his 20th pitch here in the first inning. Zobrist on the move. The pitch is high, ball four. And that puts two on with one out for Butler. Mike Maddox, a little concern on his face right about now. Giovanni Gallardo, not his uh, usual sharp self in the first inning. 
But he's got an opportunity now with one pitch to a guy like Billy Butler to get a double play. Butler is grounded into 11 of them this year. He won last night. The 11 uh, ties him for the most in the American League. 250 the average for Butler, four home runs, 28 driven in. Currently on an 0 for 7 streak. The first pitch in at the knees for strike one. And Ivani's getting a lot of ground balls, and Billy Butler has hit into a lot of double plays. He's grounded into 11 double plays already. So is Joe Mauer. They're tied for first in the American League. Dobrist establishing his lead at second base. Trailed by Stephen Vogt over at first. 0-1 pitch. Tried the breaking ball and just missed the outside corner. Fox tracks showing you that just a couple of inches outside. Bardo looks at the series of signs now sets. Two and one. It was the cutter slash slider that uh, Giovanni uses. Butler, a Former Kansas City Royal signed a three-year free agent deal with the A's in the offseason. This is 59th start at the DH spot for the A's this year. It's high and tight, three and one. Well, Gallardo now struggling uh, with his command. He lost the vote on a walk. He has... Zobrist at second, voted first, and three and one to Butler with the third baseman, Brett Lowry, waiting to be next. Now, full count. I remember Billy Butler in Kansas City as a doubles machine. Well, he had great gap power. Yeah, he had a year or maybe two where he had over 50 uh -huh. doubles. Yeah. He didn't quite regain that form. Gallardo with a payoff pitch. Runners on the move. The pitch is lined to center and hit deep. Going back to Leonis Martin. He captures it. And the uh, runner's able to retreat. Zobras to second, vote to first. That's out number two. Butler hit it well, but Leonis able to run it down in spacious center field. I think it shows you how well Mitch Moreland hit his ball to center field last night. Butler got a pitch right down the middle of the plate, and he hit it hard. He's got some power. Looked like he might have a shot at driving it over Leonis' head, but Leonis got back and made the play, and that ball didn't get to the warning track. One Mitch had hit about halfway up the wall in center field over the 400-foot sign. Of two gone, Robinson Chirinos out to uh, say something to Giovanni Gallardo. We talked last night with Brett Lowry up there. How many breaking balls Lowry had seen from Ranger pitching? It, you know, if he saw a fastball, it was the odd one. <laughs> it, it, they have just been putting a wrinkle in everything they throw to it. Yeah, and I think until he shows that he can handle the breaking balls, probably what he's going to keep on seeing. Yeah, especially in a, a spot where a base hit can hurt you. There's that cutter slash slider on the outside corner for strike one. The error by the Rangers in the first inning is the 14th error committed behind Giovanni. This is his 13th start. Well, that's cost him some pitches. So is not turning that double play cost him a few pitches. Well, back very quickly now in front of the count. No balls and two strikes. As you saw, a 280 hitter, five home runs, 23 driven in. Gallardo nods in agreement and sets. 
Zobrist in the dirt. Zobrist is going to third, and Torinos can't get to the ball before Zobrist makes it standing. Well, with all that's happened in this inning and all the pitches Giovanni's had to throw, he gets Lowry here, and it's only one run. It's kind of like a moral victory, really. His 30th pitch. Now it's runners at the corners. One ball and two strikes to Lowry. Call strike three. Well, he came back with a fastball and caught Lowry looking for something to break. The A's do get a run on a couple of hits and error, and they strand two after one. One nothing open. Tonight's T-Mobile Game Changers. Speaking of Mitch Moreland, last 20 ball games for the Ranger first baseman, a 329 average, half a dozen home runs, a dozen RBI, and a 997 on base plus slugging. Three game-winning RBI tied for the third most in the American League. He is going to work against Jesse Hahn, who deals high for ball one. Morgan with his seventh home run of the year last night, and as Tom told him, it was a titanic blast to straightaway center field. Mitch with his ninth home run in this ballpark in his career. And he skies this one to left field. In and toward the line, Sam Fulton makes the grab. That is out number one. So Hahn retires Morgan. And now Joey Gallo will come up. Gallo, 286, a couple of home runs, five driven in. This is his eighth major league game. He's hit safely in six of the first seven. Modest three-game hitting streak at 250 as he takes strike one. Joey, just 21 years of age from Las Vegas, Nevada area. On to the wind, the 1-1 pitch. Line off the glove of Zobrist out into right field. That's going to be a base hit for Joey Gallo. Well, that was a smash. Zobrist jumped as high as he could. From our angle, looked like he was going to catch it, but he couldn't quite keep it in his glove. A hot smash off the glove goes for a base hit. Well hit ball by Joey. Number one, Elvis. Couldn't get it down in the lower part of his glove. Hit off the fingers. Well, the first base hit of the night for the Rangers. Gallo aboard with one out. Elvis Andrews at the plate. 
Elvis, a 237 average, a couple of home runs, 20 RBI. One ball, no strikes. Han, beat, Han pitched against the Rangers earlier in the year in the first series here. Pitched a nice ball game. He lost three to one. Pitched six innings in that game, though. Pitched well. Since then, he's pitched very well for a young pitcher. In fact, on the 25th of May, he had a complete game shutout against the Tigers. Shows what he's capable of doing. 236 opponents batting average is solid. Not many walks, only 14 walks in 66 innings. It's been a good acquisition. On a long look at first. That comes back to the plate. Double play ground ball. Had a double clutch to Lowry. The hey, throw to first, not in time. Now that double clutch waiting for Zobras to get over the bag at second. Cost the uh, A's the opportunity to turn two. Goes down as a fielder's choice. Gallo removed. Elvis on first now with two away. Well, maybe the Rangers will make them pay for not turning that ball. Boy, that's a perfect double play ball. Here he is. That ball got to get turned. Hard hit smash right straight to him. He's ready to throw. No one there to get the throw. Well, Leonis Martin up there now. He takes a strike at the knees. That's one that doesn't go down as an error, but if the Rangers have a big inning, it'll feel like an error yeah. on the A's. Not being able to turn that play. May not be an error in the books, but it's definitely a mistake. Yeah, definitely. Martin has been hot lately. A 243 average. They want us three home runs, 18 driven in. Last six ball games, or the, I should say, the first six games in June, he has been a 360 hitter. A nine for 25. One ball and one strike. Here's the last 10 ball games for Leonis. Battled a, a wrist injury eh, just about a month ago. Uh, just now getting back to his productive self. Back in the batter's box, one ball, one strike to count. Elvis Andrews at first, two outs here in the second. Rangers trailing one nothing. Foul back and out of play. It's one and two. Folks, the 2015 Garden Gnome giveaway continues on Sunday, June 14th. The first 15,000 fans will get an Elvis Andrews stolen base gnome, courtesy of Coca-Cola. It's TexasRangers.com. You can call 972 Rangers for tickets. Martin waiting on reading the signs. A check of Andrews at first. Line to left. That's a base hit. Elvis will stop at second. And Leonis Martin continuing to swing a magic wand up there. It's the ball to fall in one more time. Well, that's one thing he has to do is be able to hit the outside pitch to the opposite field and not try to pull the ball. That's a good pitch. That ball might not have been a strike. Had good tailing action, but he stayed with it. Ball slightly outside down at the bottom of the strike zone. And was able to line that ball into left field. That's a nice job of hitting. Sure was. Well, first and second now. And Adam Rosales, the number eight hitter, steps in. Rosales, also a 243 average, three home runs, and seven driven in. It's a little bit inside for ball one. Yeah, one of the keys for a right-hand hitter against Han is if the ball looks like it's on the inside corner, to try, try to take it because the movement will probably bring it off the plate inside. And if you swing at it, that's the one that he hits you right off the hands with. Mm -hmm. You're finding a whole bunch of splinters in your hand. Yeah. It's one of those things that's easy to see but tough to do when you're <laughs> up at the plate. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. Rosales. 
been on a pretty good tear lately. Ten ball games, seven of them starts. He's at 393. Seen his average rise almost 100 points in that span. On behind in the count. The 2 0 pitch coming. Off the fist, shoveled it toward right. Zobris cuts it off, throws, and gets it. Well, the Rangers get a couple of hits in the inning, but strand two. After one and a half, the A's won. The Rangers nothing on Fox Sports Southwest. Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. This is your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. And by Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Giovanni Gallardo back to work here in the bottom of the second. Max Muncie pushing that first bunt foul. It is strike one. Muncie. A 2 11 hitter with a couple of home runs and five driven in. And, uh, he's a Baylor X, also from uh, Keller, Texas. He and John Edwards both went to uh, Keller High School. 0 1 pitch coming. A ball and a strike. Once he made his major league debut earlier in the year, called up uh, the 25th of April from. Triple A Nashville. Nashville, he was a 293 hitter. One and two. And as you would figure, coming from the A's system, he had a high on base percentage, over 400 at Triple A. That's something the A's have always stressed in their minor league system. Get on base. Rosales charging, it's a Waist high hop and throws out Muncie one gun. Next will be Marcus Simeon. Ready to be in position. Truck stop. With Tim. Marcus Simeon. Giovanni discarding that ball. It had something wrong with it. He didn't, didn't care for the field. Simeon steps to the plate, a 277 average. Six home runs, 16 driven in. Good pitch from Gallardo, who looks entirely like himself now, as opposed to the first inning when he was struggling with command. Seems like he went after Brett Lowry to end the inning. He got a strikeout that he finally figured out uh, what he wanted to feel like, and he's been able to do that since. Yeah, sure looks like he's locating the fastball where he wants to now.
Marcus Simeon, one out of two last night with a couple of walks in that ball game. One ball, two strikes. Simeon's kind of fallen on hard times. So over his last 17 games, he's just hit 186. Two and two. Mentioned in the open how Giovanni has pitched very well in his last three starts. He's only given up 11 hits in 18 innings, and all of them have been singles. Yellow. Boy, he a nice play on a, a tricky short hop. That was a do or die play, and he did it nicely. He hasn't had a lot of chances since he's been here, but. Very few of them have been routine plays. The one hopper right to him or a ground ball that stays down. They've all, it seems, taken a little hop, been tricky to make the play on. And that was not a simple play either. That's nope. one you have to charge it and you have to hope you scoop it, which he did. Then it becomes an easy play. But if you lay back on it, Simeon will beat it out. He played it the only way he could. Sam Full takes a strike. You know, and that play right there illustrates what people always say about the first step for a third baseman is critical. You know, whether you're going to charge the ball, whether you're going to stay back, that first step has to be decisive and quick. Cole yeah. pulls the next yeah, pitch I foul. think you have to say to yourself what you're going to do before it gets to you. And if it's a fast runner, you almost have to say to yourself, okay, if it's a chopper, I'm not going to lay back on it. I've got to come get it. And that's exactly what he did. Means you're probably going to get a tougher hop to catch than if you play it back, but it's the only way you can get it to first base before the runner gets there. And full pulls one out to Adam Rosales. There you go, a very quick and easy inning. 12 pitches for Yamani Gallardo to send the A's down in order. We have finished two at Oakland. A's one, Rangers nothing. music purchase tickets in the upper reserve seating section for just $14 using the online coupon code fireworks at texasrangers.com slash specials Robinson Chirinos to start things off and Jesse Hahn misses high and tight for ball one Chirinos a 197 average with five home runs and 23 RBI Two balls, no strikes. Robinson just uh, one for 11 on this road trip. Hold for four last night. And he's just two for his last 16 times to the plate. 
Hans next offering. All three. Robinson uh, exhibiting some of that patience we were talking about. About how to uh, counteract Jesse Hahn. Three and one. Robinson trying to get aboard to start this third inning for the Rangers. It'll be followed by the top of the order, Delino Shields. Ball four. You know, the first walk of the ball game issued by Jesse Hahn. Chirinos aboard. And DeShields coming up for his second at bat. And before uh, Delino steps in, let's send it back to Rick Renner for a Mazda game break. Delino. All right, Rick, thank you. Here, the Rangers trailing 1 0. Have Torinos aboard, and uh, Delano De Shields takes inside for ball one. De Shields hit a little chopper out towards short, leading off the ball game, and uh, Simeon charged and had to go off his glove for an error. Delano then promptly got picked off first base by Jesse Hahn. Arenas over there talking with uh, Hector Ortiz, the Rangers' first base coach. Hector helping him read the signs from Tony Beasley over third. One ball, no strikes. Line drive, base hit to right field. Torinos at second will put the brakes on. Getting the ball back in quickly is Reddick. And Delano to Shields with his first hit of the night. So the Rangers have runners at first and second with nobody out. And Shinsu Chu coming up. Now, Reddick has a good arm in right field. He's a very good right fielder with a strong throwing arm. And Robinson a little bit undecided on what to do. Looked to third base for some help. And was told to stay right there. Don't challenge the arm. Nobody out. Yeah, you got the big guys coming up. Let them do their do their work. If if you're able to do it, try to get the ball in the air, not hit it on the ground against this guy. He gets it again. We mentioned it before. Oh, that won't be hit on the ground. No, that won't be. Jinsu Chu gets hit again. Well, if you're going to get hit, that's a pitch to yeah. get hit with. Yeah, he was right. about 70 miles an hour. Off-speed pitch just got away from him, and that's going to load the bases for Prince Fielder. This thing. That was a breaking ball that started out about three feet inside. Yeah, he had time to look, turn, and he knew it was going to hit him. And he's yeah, thinking, thank goodness that wasn't a fastball. <laughs> so Chu hit again by a pitch. That is the sixth time that he's been hit by a pitch this year. He was tied for ninth in the American League coming in. He'd go up a little bit. So here's Fielder. Rangers have the bases loaded, nobody out. And Han misses down and away for ball one. Yeah, Han really struggling with his command. And again, that has not been a problem for him this year. He's had excellent control. Struggling, especially this inning against the Rangers, though. Rangers have their RBI machine at the plate. Yeah. The chance to do some damage. Perfect setup. One ball, no strikes. On to the plate. And it's low, 2-0. And Fielder has shown in these situations he won't go up there and expand his strike zone very much. But he still makes you throw quality strikes, and then he's ready to rip anything that's in the zone. You got Torinos at third, the Shields at second, Chew at first. The 2 0 pitch to Fielder. Line to center field. Going back is Burns. He makes the catch. Torinos tags. He is coming in and going to third. Is Delino to Shields an RBI on the sacrifice fly by Prince Fielder? We are deadlocked. It's now 1-1. One, one. Well, that ball was smoked to center field. Yeah, he had it right straight at him. A little bit one way or the other. Might have cleared the bases as it was. Delino alertly tagged up and went to third, and Rangers could get another run if Mitch can hit the same ball. It'll fly ball to the outfield. Nicely done to stay out of the double play, though. Get the ball in the air. Yeah. 
looked like Fielder made him get the ball up before he was going to have a hack at it. Yeah, that's exactly right. You don't want to swing at the low sinker in that situation. Now here's Mitch who skied the left field back in the first inning. Pulls it on the ground, a base hit to right field. The Shields is in. Chu stops at second. Mitch Moreland with the RBI single, and the Rangers have a two to one lead. And Mitch came into the game with a 15 game road hitting streak, and now it's 16 games. He continues to do very well against the A's. 23 runs driven in now for Mitch Moreland. In a conference on the mound, uh, Kurt Young, the pitching coach out there to uh, see if he can bring some semblance of order back to the uh, A's defensively. Bo, our excellent statistician, Buzz reminded me that Han hit three batters in his first start against the Rangers. That's I right. Remember that yeah. fielder and Odor twice. That's right. I've forgotten about that. That was the opening weekend or no, opening man. week here. Joey well, the uh, Rangers have made him pay for the wildness here, a walk and a hit batter, and uh, it's led directly to a couple of runs. Now, Joey Gallo up there with a chance to do some more damage. Gallo had a single into right field his first time, takes low and outside for ball one. Joey hit a top spin liner that went off the glove of Ben Zobrist for a base hit. Han has only thrown two of 13 first pitch strikes. One ball and one strike. Jesse Han, a 25 year old, originally a property of the uh, Tampa Bay Rays system. Drafted him out of Virginia Tech. There's a line drive, base hit to right field. Chuck it around third is Chu, and he puts the brakes on as Reddit comes up and shows you that great arm. Throw was cut off by Muncy. But Joey Gallo with his second hit of the night. The Rangers have reloaded the bases and still just one out. Yep, that is a sign of respect for the right fielder, I guess. Elvis Andrews. So he's trying to lift that ball, got on yep. top of it a little bit and hit one of those sinking line drives to right field. And Tony Beasley right there to put the stop sign up. Well, base is full once again. Here's Elvis. Rounded into a fielder's choice his first time. And he shoots that first pitch foul. And as, uh, Hahn pulled the string a little bit. And yeah. Elvis out in front. Talking about Han Buzz signing with Tampa Bay, he didn't pitch his first two years, 2010 and 2011. He had Tommy John surgery, drafted out of college. The Rangers have a draft choice. Their third round pick, Mike Machuela, Machuela, who was projected to maybe be a much higher pick than that. He's had Tommy John surgery, and the Rangers drafted him knowing that, knowing that it's going to take some rehab. And Generally, pitchers who have Tommy John surgery are able to come back, and hopefully Machuela, Machuela, I hope I'm saying that right, will be able to come back too. I missed two full years. He came back and turned into an excellent big league pitcher. Saw uh, Pat Venditti loosening in the A's bullpen. Mitch Dell was slowly hit to third. Only play is to home. They get the force. Nice job by Lowry to throw it over the head of Shinsu Chu. And gets the uh, force at home. So two gone now. Base is still loaded. And Leonis Martin coming up. Now batting number two, Leonis Martin. Martin and a soft single to the left his first time up there. Again, uh, Hahn taking something off the first pitch and they want to snub that right off the end of the bat. The Rangers with a couple of runs across. They would love to get a couple more here. A base hit would get that job done. 
Now Marlin at third, Gallo at second, Andrews at first. On back to the plate. Nothing in two. It was interesting reading about the Rangers' recent draft. Kip Fagg, who's been in the Rangers organization for, I think it's 25 years, said it's the most excited he's ever been after a draft. Felt like they got four of the top 20 guys on the draft list. That's pretty exciting. On ready. Leonis waiting the 0-2 pitch. Laid off that breaking ball. Yeah. That's one and two. Tough one to lay off. Yeah. Too. Looked like it went right near the strike zone. You know, for a guy who wasn't swinging the bat as well as Leonis, that would have been a swing and a miss. And then he was over. Yeah, I think at times this year that would have been a swing and a miss. One two pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Well, Jesse Hahn uh, really struggling in this inning with command. It kind of came out of nowhere. A leadoff walk to Chirinos. Got the whole thing started. Then he hit Chu with the first pitch. It was two hitters later. That lowered the bases. And Rangers have put a couple on the board since then. Two balls and two strikes with the bases full and two outs. On okays the sign, and from the stretch, he will deal. It hit him down and in that got his front foot, and that's going to score another run. Wow. Second hit batter of the inning, and Leonis is hobbled as Mitch Moreland comes down the line to score. They had him no balls and two strikes through two curveballs, and I guess the key to that at bat was laying off the curveball that was close to being a strike. Mm -hmm. It's going to get the Rangers a run. Hopefully it doesn't do anything to keep Leonis from continuing in this ball game. If it does, it might not have been worth it. Hit the side of his right ankle. Well, the Rangers, as a team, have uh, been leading the American League and all of baseball for that matter pick 36 hit by pitch this year with the two tonight that is the most in Major League Baseball and Leonis Martin taking the brunt of that last one said I'm okay I'll stay in the ball game but it still hurts no. he gets the RBI if, if you could still play and it hurts deal with it then <laughs> <laughs> don't re-injure it or anything yeah. like that but a little pain hey that's what 162 games is all about. Here's Adam Rosales, and he takes inside for ball one. Rosales, the ninth Ranger to come to the plate in this third inning. Three of them have scored. The bases are loaded. There are two out. Rosales hit a ground ball to second, his first time up there. And a chopper out to short. Simeon will take it to second for the force, and that'll do it. But the Rangers do send nine up. Three of them score, and they leave three on base. After two and a half, it's the Rangers three, the A's one.
one lead over the Oakland A's. And speaking of three, we make three trips a year to Oakland, all the division cities, but to San Francisco and Oakland area. And there's only one restaurant that we go to every single time that we come to San Francisco. It's Eric Nadell's favorite. There you see the sign. Henry's Hunan, an Asian food restaurant. There are a few of them in the city. And we go there with a whole cadre of people each time. There's Matt Hicks, former Rangers announcer, Vince Catronio, Fitz, and Eric and myself went. We get a table full of food. It is all family style. It is all delicious. And Eric Nadell has said on numerous occasions as we see the fly ball out to Shinsu Chu and Wright. And uh, Eric has said on numerous occasions that um, that would be the food he would eat if he was told this is your last meal. You're, you're going to die tomorrow. This would be the food he would eat. So we, when it's that kind of good, you make a lot of happy plates. We made our plates very, very happy uh, at Henry's Hunan. And there's Eric and Matt. They were there with us yesterday. Eric eats there as many as five or six times per trip and it <laughs> has caused me to think many times guys what would be my very last meal if they told me i was going to die tomorrow I, I i hope i could think of something that my wife makes that i <laughs> that. i got a suggestion for you john next time you go to henry's and take a picture Take it when the food comes, not of the empty plates. Yeah, I probably should have. You guys, you guys didn't leave much of it. It had to be pretty good. All we saw was gravy on empty plates. Yeah, that's that's the problem with Henry's. It's so good you don't <laughs> you, you don't think to you don't think to take the picture until you're done eating. <laughs> Oh, it sure looked good. I've been to Henry's before a couple of times too. Not as many yeah. times as Eric, but it's excellent. Yavani Gallardo with that first out under his belt here in the third inning. Josh Reddick now at the plate, a one ball, two strike count. All of a sudden, Yavani Gallardo has retired the last six that he's faced. And make that seven as Josh Reddick just got tied up at home plate. He can't believe it. But he's going to have to go back and uh, take a seat. So two gone. Ben Zobers coming up. And let's uh, head it back to John. Yeah, guys, in the interest of full disclosure, I actually do know what food I would have. Um, whenever we go to Henry's Hunan, part of the trip includes a two-block walk to Mitchell's Ice Cream. <laughs> now, this ice cream, they brag about it being the fattiest ice cream in America. It's been there since 1953. Now, there you go, Tom. That has not been eaten yet, but it's about to. Uh, someone's and, licked the top of that thing off. I know it doesn't look well, that you, smooth. You can't let it drip on your hand. <laughs> so they, that right there, Mitchell's Ice Cream, just two blocks from Henry's, that might be it if they were telling me I was done. Adam Rosales, a little bobble, recovers and throws. That will do it. Eight straight now sent down. By Giovanni Gallardo and the Rangers. We finished three in Oakland. It's the Rangers three and the A's one.
Folks, the Los Angeles Dodgers make a rare interleague appearance uh, June 15th and 16th. The first 25,000 fans on June 16th will receive an MLB Network tote bag. Visit TexasRangers.com or call 972-RANGERS to get your tickets. Yo, Buzz, John was talking about Henry's Hunan. When my son Ben got married, he got married out in San Francisco, and the wedding took place at the St. Francis, where we're staying right now, in the top of the St. Francis. And the day before the wedding, because Eric likes Henry's Hunan so much, we took maybe, oh, 15 people over there to have dinner. And right in the middle of our dinner, the kitchen caught on fire. <laughs> you could see flames coming out of the kitchen. <laughs> we had to we had to get up and leave. They put the fire out real quickly. Unfortunately, our food was on the table. We came back and we were able to eat. But that made it an exciting dinner. I bet. But everybody loved it. We had one of those giant tables that sp the middle of it spins around. Uh -huh. So you just put all the food in the middle and whatever you want. You just spin the table till it comes around to you. Called roulette. Ru oh, no, no, that's it. It was a it was a very popular place for. Most of the people who come to San Francisco for the first time, they so loved it. It was real nice of them to have a bonfire for your, you know, <laughs> yeah. your wedding party. It was very, it was very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, one out as uh, Torino's flies out to right field. Now, Delano to Shields up there for his third at bat. Delano's been on base both times tonight. He singled last time up and reached on an error in the first. Rangers three runs on five hits tonight. The A's one run on two hits. Each team has committed one error. Strike in at the knees to the shield. It's one and one. Delano after that uh, base hit now hitting at 273. On back to him. Two and one the count. Delano a a little bit of a downturn lately offensively. Snapped an 0 for 12 that he was in last night when he had that triple. But it was a well-timed triple. Rangers uh, and A's were in a scoreless game at that point. And the line was a three-bagger and then was driven home for the first run of the game by Prince Fielder. And that pitch in for a strike. Three and two the count. You know, a lot of the pitches he takes that are that are called strikes are borderline pitches. It's not like he's taking pitches right down the middle. Yeah, he's, he's got a very discerning eye. That, that's a strike, lower part of the strike zone, but against the sinker ball pitcher, not a great pitch to hit. Payoff pitch inside ball four. And a very good at bat by Delano to Shields to sure get aboard with one out. Well, folks, coming up on Thursday, June 18th, an American tradition comes to Fox and Fox Sports 1 for the first time as the greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest for a chance to stamp their names into the history books. Our exclusive coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins June 18th on Fox Sports 1, Fox, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. One on, one out here is Shinsu Chu. Broken bat, base hit to left field. The Shields at second. He will put the brakes on. The business end of that bat going out halfway between first and second. I'm, uh, that may be beyond being sawed off. Yeah. You sawed off, the bat just breaks at the handle. That's completely destroyed. Remember how bats used to break? Yeah. Like, like a little... A little break down near your right. hands that you could almost tape up and keep using. Very seldom. I, I don't. I don't remember seeing a bat broken like they used to no. break. Just one little crack down near the handle. Most of the bats I remember. I, I used to put nails in them. And use yeah. them as a kid. You could, yeah, you could keep right on using them. Mm -hmm. There's fielder. Gets that right off the end of the bat for a strike. But now when that when that crack starts, it just keeps going until the bat just breaks right down the middle of the bat. Well, our four leaderboard. RBI this year, Mark Teixeira leading the American League. This is up to date now. Josh Donald's a second. Prince Fielder is three behind Teixeira in third place. You could tie him with one swing of the bat right here. I think he was trying to on that foul ball. He just got out in front of it. We'll play it second with Simeon coming in. Runners are going. The throw to third and out at third base. 
Here's Delino to shield. Well, the Rangers uh, trying to get the double steal going. It didn't look like Delino had his best jump. He was shot down by Stephen Vogt. He didn't have the best jump, and you got one of the best RBI men in baseball up at the plate, too. Left hand hitter, clear shot for the pitcher, for the catcher. So two gone now. Chu out at second base. 0 oh and 2, the count to fielder. Inside that hit him. He hit three last time, he's hit three this time. Hahn was fortunate that uh, Prince is fairly mild mannered because by the time he got through avoiding that pitch or trying to, he was halfway three quarters of the way out to Hahn. If he had decided he was going to charge the mound, Hahn had no place to go. And if you're going to steal third base with a left-hand hitter up there and it's Prince Fielder, you got to make sure you can you can make the play at third. You can beat the throw. I don't know that he had a very good jump, but it was an easy throw for the catcher. You just hate to see men on base thrown out with Prince at the plate. Yep. So now first and second. Third hit by pitch tonight. For Hahn. He had two last inning and now one this inning. Mitch Moreland takes inside and low for ball one. And Vogt going to go out and uh, suggest that Hahn readjust his sights. Last inning, he hit Shinsu Chu with a pitch. And then uh, four hitters later, hit Leonis Martin to drive in a run. Now he has hit fielder and put two on with two outs for Mitch Moreland. Moreland an RBI single his last time up there. On with a 1 0 pitch coming. Another broken bat. And a foul ball. But you, the more the games go by and the more you see these bats breaking, these aren't going into the stands, but they easily could go into yeah. the stands. They're just going out toward the field. It just seems to make more of an argument for putting up a screen from the third base to first base sure does not quite as much danger here because it's so far away but boy in some parts where it's up close they're going to keep using the same kind of bats and they're going to keep breaking in the same way I don't know how you can keep from putting up a screen 1-1 one, one pitch to Moreland now one and two no it only makes sense you're right there not going to be able to do anything with the bats unless they mandate a different kind of process for making them. You know, they say that the fans that sit there don't want the screen. Well, the fans that sit right behind home plate have the best seats in the house, and they've got a screen, and they're not complaining. On staring in for the sign, gets the one he wants. Now the one-two pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Jew at second, fielder at first. And vote again out to talk to Han. Well, he's really trying to you know, guide him through this half inning. Vote figuring that uh, he needs some guidance. Trying to overthrow a couple of pitches probably and losing command of the strike zone. The Warland back in. Two and two the count. Jew establishing his lead out there at second. At the bottom of your screen. Up the middle, into right center field, a base hit. Jew will score, stopping at second his fielder, Mitch Moreland, with his second consecutive RBI single. And the Rangers take a four to one lead, and that's going to do it for Jesse Hahn as Bob Melvin on his way out to the mound. Good piece of hitting by Mitch Moreland. Well, occasionally you'll hit right into the shift and occasionally you'll hit away from the shift. There's a ground ball to second that was away from the shift and yeah. turns into an RBI for Mitch. Well hit ball. Moreland with his second hit tonight, his second run driven in, and that's going to do it for Han. So a pitching change underway here in Oakland. We'll come back and tell you about uh, Pat Venditti right after this timeout on Fox Sports Southwest.
lead. They've driven Jesse on from the game, and Pat Venditti, the uh, switch pitcher, on again. We saw him last night for an inning, and he is back out there tonight throwing left-handed. And he will face Joey Gallo with runners at first and second. A run across and two outs here in the fourth inning. Big sweeping breaking ball to Gallo is in for strike one. And then he came on last night, faced Chirinos, Andrew Alberto, and Diano to Shields. He was throwing right-handed to the three right-handers. There's his uh, crossover glove, if you will. He can switch his hands whenever he wants to with that thing. Ooh, he got away with a breaking yeah, ball did. and stayed inside. He saw that. He timed it. He just didn't hit it. He was right on it. Just missed it. That would have gone a long way. <laughs> <Would've>. <laughs> you can see the launch angle that he has when he swings. And he has gone on strikes. Man, did he? Three breaking balls, and Gallo is gone. The side comes to or is retired. Rangers do score a run. They strand two after three and a half. Four one, Texas. Is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by the Mazda 6. JD Power has awarded the Mazda 6 highest ranked vehicle appeal among mid sized cars. Now, well, Giovanni Gallardo back out to pitch the fourth inning. Rangers supporting him tonight. Giving him more uh, already than his average uh, run allotment. Four runs tonight. And Rangers have been averaging. Uh, a little bit over three runs every time Gallardo has gone out there. 3.28 to be exact. Ninth lowest run support in the American League. Go well, the other way, Vote sneaks one inside the line. He's going for two and will be in standing with a jam shot double to start off the fourth inning. That's one of those pitches that's the cutter on the inside part of the plate. It's the pitch that he wants wants to make. And Volt just able to kind of fight it off. But he ran it in on his fist and jammed him. As a hitter, you go, oh, that didn't feel too good. Oh, looking pretty good where it ended up, though. Now that's the first hit for Oakland, first base runner for Oakland. Since Volt walked in the first inning. The one on, nobody out. Billy Butler lined to center field in the first. 0 for 1 tonight. Takes the breaking ball that nibbles on the outside corner for strike one. Gallardo's been able to throw first pitch strikes to nine out of the last ten hitters. Struggled with command in the first inning, but he's been very sharp since then. 0 1. Got him on the fist, and that's chop foul. No balls and two strikes. And good news uh, from U.S. Cellular in Chicago where the White Sox came back 
and defeated the Houston Astros tonight, four to one. Astros were on top of that ball game, one nothing until the seventh inning. So, with the Astros losing, if the Rangers can uh, get a win here tonight. They would cut the gap to just one measly game. The Astros have lost seven straight. Rangers have picked five and a half games up in the last. 10 days. Yeah, about as quick as you can do it. Yeah. They got to take care of business tonight. Gallardo, a check of second, the one two pitch. Got him swinging. High cutter. Third strikeout for Giovanni Gallardo tonight. Butler retired. Now Brett Lowry coming up. Gallardo came into the game second on the uh, Rangers staff in strikeouts. Now has 52 for the year. Working to Lowry, who was a strikeout victim his first time up there. Strike one. Boy, he's just pumping in the strikes right now. So do you think that kind of situation buzz is a mechanical thing that's corrected or just a tempo or rhythm. What is it that you can come back after struggling in an inning, put it all together? You get something that feels good to you, whether it's the, the timing of, of your of your motion or you feel where your load spot's supposed to be, where your hand's supposed to be when you uh -huh. go forward. And once you feel that one or two times, then you can repeat that. Huh. It's when you're searching out there and you don't you don't have a feel for anything that's good. And to the naked eye, you can't. I mean, I can't tell the difference between what he looked like in the first sure. inning and what he looks like now. But you can you can see not just the result you can see the way he follows through with uh -huh. more more on balance more in control of himself right. Oh and two the count to Lowry. That's off the glove of Torinos all the way to the backstop so down to third goes Stephen Vogt. That was a cover that just kept on cutting. And that's going to be scored a pass ball on Robinson Chirinos. So now vote at third. One out, a one two count on Lowry. Slapped out of play down the right side. Still one and two. Mentioned uh, Gallardo now with. 52 strikeouts. The team leader, Nick Martinez, has 55. Or excuse me, Colby Lewis has 55. Nick Martinez has 43. Gallardo again set for a 1 2 pitch. Another foul off to the right. He threw that right up where he wanted to. Robinson put the target right up around the letters. Ronnie delivered it up there and Lowry hacked at it, but was able to follow it off. Watch the catcher sign. Way up high. Yep. There's the pitch way up high. And Lowry, he went for it, but he was able to follow it off. You would say typically that would be followed up by a breaking ball, but that's uh looks like it's you know, he's going out fastball. With, yeah, going with a fastball. Torinos had originally put down the curveball, and it, apparently Yomani doesn't feel comfortable with the curveball right now, especially with the runner at third. Goes that fastball away. It looks like uh, maybe another cut fastball out there. And that's poked foul. Down into the Ranger bullpen. Now Torino's going to go out and find out what he feels comfortable doing. This is where when the catcher's thinking along with you and he puts down a, a, a call that maybe he believes is the right one, but he goes ahead and switches to what the pitcher wants to throw. And that pitch gets fouled off. He'll go out and say, "Okay, now here's what I was thinking. What's going on?" Mm -hmm. yeah. well, now see what they decided. Uh, yeah, go ahead and throw whatever you want to. I'll catch it. Another one-two pitch. Got him on the fist. That's going to get the run home. Elvis on the Mormon for the out. In to score, Stephen Vogt. And it's a four-to-two Ranger lead. That pass ball comes back to produce 
a run immediately. Lowry gets his 24th RBI of the year, but there are two outs and bases empty. He was going outside, he came in, got the ball in with some movement, jammed him. Got the hitter, and unfortunately, the runner had moved to third, and he scores on the play, but good pitch right there. Yep. Made the pitch he wanted to and got the out. A two on Max Muncy up for his second at bat. Muncy had a ground ball to second as he let off the second. Ah! Belt high strike, nothing in one. Gallardo working a little too quick for the Vikings of Mac Mon Max Muncy, a 24 year old. One ball, one strike. Let's see, a fifth round selection by the A's in 2012 out of Baylor. Gallardo to the plate. Unless he didn't really want to do it, foul tipped it into the glove of Torinos. A one and two now. Softly hit up the middle. Rosales can't come up with it. That's going to be an infield single for Munson. Well, look at the balls that have been put in play this inning. Steven Vogt got sawed off and hit a little blooper to left field. Lowry drove in a run with a jam shot to shortstop. And once he gets a base hit on the same kind of a ball, all three balls put in play have hit the hitter right down near the hands. So once he aboard, second hit of the inning, fourth hit of the ball game for Oakland. Marcus Simeon, ground ball to third, back in the second inning. One ball, no strikes. Simeon, a 276 average. Half a dozen home runs, 16 driven in. Gallardo, back to the plate. And the face hit to center. That ball struck very well. Muncy at second will put the brakes on. Leonis Martin comes up ready to fire. So back to back, two out singles. And Sam Fold will be next. That one was hit well. Simeon got the good part of the bat on that ball. Now batting left fielder, 23, Sam Fold. I tell you, Vani must feel good throwing his fastball because he's throwing a lot of fastballs. Yeah. Not many, not many sliders, not many curveballs. And he's looks like he's got a great fastball too. And that last one. You're just thankful as a pitcher that the hitter gets it up in the air a little bit. It's going right back over your head. Sam Fold to ground out his first time. Runs it first and second. And there's a curveball. 70%. Or 60%, excuse me, fastballs tonight. Seems like it's more than that even. Yeah, it's been more than that this inning for sure. Behind home plate. One ball and one strike. Fold's been in a serious downturn. He's seven for 77 in his last 34 ball games. That's not very good. No, my he's, math skills aren't great. He's but. struggling. He's got Muncie at second, Simeon at first. Gallardo ready for the 1-1 pitch. A little pop foul. Got, got a long run over there. And he slides as he sneaks up on the tarpaulin. Tremendous amount of foul room in this ballpark. 95 feet from each bag, each first and third base, over to the uh, railing over there. And Joey Gallo becoming acquainted with the tarpaulin.
the one and two now. Everybody back in place. Sam Ford back in there. Oh, for his last ten trips to home plate. Missing the outside corner. Guy Arbor now has a 2-2 count. Gold getting almost all of his at-bats against right-handers. Still just hitting 194 against righties. The 2-2 pitch. Got him swinging. Down and in that good cutter from Gallardo. And the side is retired, but a run across on three hits with two left. After four, Rangers four, A's two. Get discounted tickets for Friday's game against the Twins. And the first 2,000 fans who purchase a Baylor University Bay ticket receive a special Baylor-themed Rangers cap. Go to TexasRangers.com slash U-Days for details. Rangers coming to bat here in the top of the fifth inning, leading four to two. It'll be Elvis Andrews to start things off, Leonis Martin, and Adam Rosales to follow. Bat Venditti for his uh, second inning of work now switches the glove over, starts throwing right handed against the right handed hitters. Last inning, he came in to strike out Joey Gallo, pitching left handed. What if they keep separate statistics on him? What he does to the right hander as opposed to left handed. I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. Well, this cutting through that high breaking ball. One and two. Did Denny okay's the sign? And, uh, Elvis laying off that big slurve. Yeah, Venditti against left-hand hitters. They're 0 for 2 against him. Right-hand hitters are 1 for 9. And Elvis caught looking at a third strike. Fastball down and away. One gone. Now batting. Number 2. Jonas Martin. Now Venditti will uh, switch the glove over and go with the left hand. Left-hander Leonis Martin is one for one tonight. Single, and he's been hit by a pitch. And that breaking ball hangs inside. He's get a little buzz going around the uh, crowd over here when he. They love it when he yeah. comes in. 
But it's you know it's hard not to root for the kid. He's sure. kind of an underdog. He obviously doesn't have exceptional physical talent, and it's also a unique thing to see in a major league game a pitcher who can do this. Yep. He's not a big strong guy. He's kind of a wiry little guy. And he's gotten to the big leagues. He's worked his butt off to get here and he's having a little bit a little bit of success. It's, it's hard not to root for this guy. Sure. Guy. He was brought up from Nashville the triple A affiliate of the A's we're working 17 games down there and a 136 ERA and that pitch high and tight. So the owners Martin draws the walk. He is aboard with one out and uh, let's take a look at our lows never stop improving feature here tonight. And we're talking about Leonis Martin. The last 10 ball games, Leonis has hit 368, five multiple hit games. Previous 17 games, not quite so good. About 160 with one multi hit game. Martin draws the walk. He is aboard with one out. Adam Rosales now face the right handed hurling Pat Venditti. One ball, no strikes. I wonder if he ever gets confused, forgets who's up there, and just switches, <laughs> switches hands. Well, that's mindless. It depends on his catcher to let him know. <laughs> Let's go down to John Radigan while we have a second, John. Yeah, guys, you know, Jeff Bannister was talking a lot about Vendetti before they saw him yesterday, and he said, I'm really anxious to see him. I don't want him to have success against us, but I'm really anxious to see him and hope we don't get mesmerized by him. And to the point of keeping separate stats for him as a righty or him as a lefty. Uh, Banny said we will definitely look at him as two separate pitchers. Mm -hmm. One's a righty and one's a left. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, right now they've had a, a walk against the uh, righty and a strikeout against the righty and a strikeout against the lefty. He throws pretty much the same way from both sides. Uh -huh. Fastballs. Right handed that was 84 miles an hour so it's a below average fastball and he throws a slurve type slider for his breaking ball same thing left handed might be a little stronger right handed than left handed. But it, you know it's not like he's throwing any kind of unhittable pitches right. he's got a nice sinker and a nice slider. But it's not a splitter it's not a cutter it's not 95 miles an hour. He's making the most out of his physical skill for sure. Two and two, the count. This is also obviously has to work on a pickoff move, both left handed yeah. and right handed. That's kind of different. Pretty sharp slider. Nice yep. pitch. Able to, able to lay off that. So three and two now the count. You see a lot of right hand, not a lot, but occasionally you see a right-handed pitcher with similar kind of stuff, a sinker slider guy, below average fastball, who's tough on right-handers, but then has trouble when the lefties come right. up to the plate. There goes Martin. The breaking ball is outside. Ball four. Rosales well, hustling down to first. So back-to-back -back walks. Two aboard with one out, and Robinson Torino's coming up. And Kurt Young, before Torino steps in, will go out to the mound. It's obviously a huge advantage if as a right handed sinker slider guy when the left hander comes up instead of having to figure out how you're going to get him out you better come up with a change up or some other kind of a pitch. You just switch to the left hand and now you've got the <laughs> advantage because the lefty has trouble hitting the left handed slider that yeah. you throw. A quick visit by Kurt Young back to the dugout he goes and uh, Torinos now steps in. Got Martin at second, Rosales at first. One out here in the Ranger fifth. Texas on top, four to two, looking for more. Torinos has walked and scored this evening. He's also flied to right field. The good thing for for the manager is when he comes into the game, you don't have to look at the matchups. You know you're going to get the proper matchup: righty versus righty, yeah. lefty versus lefty. You don't have to have someone warmed up in the bullpen for that matchup. You're a right hand pitcher and Prince Fielder and Mitch Moreland are coming up. You're getting your lefty up. And then Diddy, you don't have to worry about it. 
Well, the Rangers uh, with runners in scoring position this year. A little bit tougher of late. And, uh, gotten that average up to close to respectability. One ball and one strike. Rangers, the last five ball games, hitting just 208 with runners in scoring position, but overall 242. Torino stepping back in. One ball and one strike to count. Vendetti a check of Leonis at second. Hit hard but pulled foul. And that's going to cost a bat for Torino's. Rangers as a team have uh, been trending up at a pretty quick rate, too. They've been hitting 287. Their last 17 ball games. Seem to get their overall average up to sixth in the American League. The ball two is off the plate. Gotten up to where they're third in the American League and run scored at 265. Coming into play tonight. And Nitty again set. Torino's just able to tick that one foul. Robinson 0 for 1 tonight. 0 for his last nine trips to the plate. Trying to bring home Leonis Martin. 3 and 2. Uh, Torino's hitting in the ninth spot tonight. Hitting with a full count. The line of the shields and the top of the order waits to be next. One out. Leonis Martin away from second. Adam Rosales away from first. Runners on the move. Payoff pitch. Sky to left field. Leonis Martin did not pick up the ball and it's going to turn into a double play. Left fielder full, turns it over easily to Zobris, and that'll do it for the Rangers. No runs, no hits, one left. Halfway through the ball game, Rangers four, A's two. Season saved nearly 50% on four tickets, four jumbo hot dogs, four Coke soft drinks, two kids' zones wristbands, and one souvenir program. 
Visit TexasRangers.com slash specials to get your Coca-Cola family packs for the games June 23rd through 25th against these Oakland A's. Giovanni Gallardo starting off the fifth inning. He's facing the top of the A's order, Billy Burns. Josh Reddick and Ben Zobris to follow. Burns one out of two tonight. Slowly hit Elvis gonna have to hurry. Burns can fly. A nice play by Elvis to nip him at first. He knew he had to get there quickly. <laughs> he got to the ball quickly. He fired it quickly and just barely got Burns at first base. That's a nice play by Elvis. Looks like he might have been shading him up a step or so toward the plate. Yeah, I think mean, he was. Well, well done. Elvis Andrews. Another good pitch by Giovanni, too. The, the three balls, three of the balls they put in play last inning were jam shots. Two of the hits were jam shots. And starts off the fifth inning getting in on the fist of Billy Burns. Now Josh Reddick, who's one for two. Reddick had a first inning single. Last time up, called out on strikes. That was in the third inning. Giovanni, four strikeouts tonight. This is high. Two and nothing to Reddick. Reddick now a four game hitting streak going. He's had kind of a roller coaster season for the, uh, for the A's. First 20 games, he had 389. Then over a 24 game stretch during May, he hit 220. And then lately, his last 10 ball games, he's hit over 370. Pitch is low, three balls and a strike. The only walk that uh, Gallardo has issued to, tonight came back in the first inning. And now out in front, three and one. The breakdown for Gallardo, seven ground outs, two fly outs, and the four strikeouts. Pulled on the ground, Moreland, ranging to his right. Good flip to Gallardo, two gone. Now looking at the scores and looking at the standings, Buzz, another team that's made a similar kind of comeback to the Rangers is Toronto. Yeah. Toronto won again tonight. They've won eight straight. The Yankees lost, and they're only three games out of first place. Toronto now is 31-30, and 30, having won eight straight. Yeah, he's got through sweeping the uh, Marlins yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. A two gone here in the fifth. And Ben Zobrist, who is 0 for 2, steps in. The ground ball that Zobrist had in the first inning drove in a run, his 15th of the year. Good fastball from Gallardo for strike one. Zobrist, one out of four last night. His uh, eighth inning double last night snapped an 0 for 18 streak that he had been mired in. Vincent Zobrist having uh, the knee problems. He had knee surgery on the 28th of April. He was activated uh, May 25th, so not, not quite a full month after surgery. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Gallardo back up on top, getting ready to throw his 85th pitch of the night. Got him swinging. The out will be recorded at first as uh, Chirinos fires on to Moreland. That'll do it. Three up, three down. Go the A's. We're going to the sixth inning. Rangers four, A's two.
Ranch jackpot is worth $100 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. If a Ranger hits a home run during the inning, Charles Rose from North Richland Hill will win $100. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Charles will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Now the top of the order here in our Sonic Slam inning. The liner to Shields, Shinsu Chu, and Prince Fielder. And if somebody gets on, Mitch Moreland again, who won our Sonic Slam last night. Delano one for two tonight. First ball swinging, shallow right center field. Billy Burns with that great closing speed, able to run it down. One pitch and one away. And before Shinsu Chu steps in, let's send it back to Rick Renner for a Mazda game break. Rick. All right, Rick, thank you. That was kind of a momentous game for the Mariners. They finally scored more than three runs in the game. You know, they've gone 13 consecutive games really? without I scoring I more than three that. runs. And they were getting set to uh, tie a team that you played on for the most consecutive. 72, 72 Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> 14 consecutive runs. Anytime off some offense ties something that has to do with the 72 Rangers, it can't be good. <laughs> Yeah, 14 consecutive games you guys had to wow. three runs or less. I mean, that's a team with Seeger, <laughs> Nelly Cruz, yeah, Cano, Cano. Yeah, Trumbo and, now, and Trumbo. You know, sooner or later they're going to put it together and start start showing some offense. It's, it hasn't happened yet, but they've got too many hitters on that team to think. Two grounds out and seven for a two gone. Yeah, but apparently that's what everybody in Seattle's been saying since April. And it hasn't happened yet. No. But I agree with you. It's, it's bound to happen sometime. I, I just can't I can't see at this stage of his career that Cano's going to hit 240. Yeah. But Trumbo's a streaky guy, so his his streaks kind of come and go. I don't know how Nelly can stay as hot as he's been for two months. He might cool off a little bit, but Seeger's, yeah, very solid, consistent hitter. But they got to get some production from the rest of the lineup too, and sure that's, that's one thing. They last couple of years, a lot of those young high draft choices just haven't been getting the job done. And still waiting for Ackley to develop into a decent major league offensive player. Rich Fielder facing the uh, southpaw, Pat oh. Benditti. The other guy is Zanino. Zanino's got a lot of power, but right. You know how long how long do you stay with a big strong catcher who's hitting like 170 or 180? Oh, Whoa, right too. That one definitely tested the bottom of the strike. Yeah. Down. Tested Prince's patience. Too. <laughs> and that's that's not a strike. Well, the strikeout Rangers gone in order. We have finished five and a half innings here at Odonko Coliseum. Rangers four, A's two.
for tonight. We'll highlight tomorrow's starting pitcher, Chichi Gonzalez. No runs allowed in his first 14 and two-thirds innings of work. That's the longest scoreless streak uh, allowed or accumulated by a uh, Ranger pitcher in franchise history to begin his career. Ranger started tomorrow against the A's. Chichi making his third major league start. And he has been nothing short of sensational. Steven Bolt leading things off, chops a pitch foul. And finds himself down at the count, no balls, two strikes. Boat has walked and doubled it tonight. Doubled leading off the fourth inning, came around to score. It was the second A's run. A's have uh, scored in two different innings. First and the fourth, one run each inning. Yeah, the double by Vogt is the only extra base hit Giovanni's given up in four starts. And it was hardly a ringing double. I swear, Giovanni, day in and day out, gives up more cheap runs than any pitcher. <laughs> He's not like giving up a hard hit single and a home run or a couple of doubles in the gap. It seems like it's a ground ball that's an infield hit, a blooper. And somehow they scratch a run against him. And today is no different. Yeah. So the A's put together a couple of singles, an error, and a walk in a fielder's choice in the first inning for a run. And that bloop double. Of the ground out and vote will go take a seat after he watches strike three sail on past. I think this is the best stuff that he's had all year. Pretty close to it. One walk, six strikeouts. Yep. He's had a good, consistent fastball all day. Pop that one right on the outside corner. Exactly where Robinson Torino's put that glove. Yep. One gone. Here's Billy Butler to face Gallardo. Butler has lined to center and struck out. Hi. Butler's 0 for 2 with men in scoring position tonight. 0 for his last nine and only hitting 161 in the month of June. 248 overall, and that's after getting off to a terrific start for the A's this year. Hi. Brought him in to be their full-time DH, and he fulfilled that promise early. Hit 287 in April. Since then, it has been going the other way. 0-2 pitch coming from Gallardo. Butler had three home runs and 12 RBI over his first 16 games. Since then, he's had one home run and 16 RBI. That's not with either he for the uh, ball club are looking for it. Call strike three. Another good fastball. Outside corner to vote, inside corner to Butler. Right where he was aiming. Seven strikeouts for Giovanni. Boat. I don't know if it's a ball or a strike, but it hit the glove. Yeah, that's a strike. Hitter doesn't like it, but that pitch is touching the inside part of the strike zone. Not like it's four or five inches inside. Well, three consecutive strikeouts now for Gallardo. Struck out Zobras to end the fifth inning. He's gotten Vote and Butler to open up the sixth. And here's Lowry. Strike one. Lowry called out on strikes in the first. And an RBI on a ground out in the fourth inning. Gallardo now the uh, Ranger team leader in strikeouts, 56 up this year. And it's strike two. Nine, had nine 0 and 2 counts now. Five of his strikeouts have come after getting the count to 0 and 2. See if he can make it another one. Throw that slider down and away, he got a chance. He hit it. Out right so, there. Yep, that same one. And Gallardo ends up striking out the side in order. Hades are gone quietly in the sixth. After six complete, Rangers by two.
three tonight. Mitch Morland has had a couple of RBI singles. The first one in the third inning. Got the Rangers going, and then in the fourth inning, adding on another run. Made it a 4-1 ball game. Giovanni Gallardo, a season high eight strikeouts tonight. He has taken over the team leadership for the year with 57 punch outs. Giovanni has been getting stronger as the game has gone on. Sure looks like it. Congratulations, girls. Seems like so whatever. The first inning, he got out of the first inning, he pitched out of a jam, only gave up one run, didn't have pinpoint command. But since the first inning, he's had the confident body language working very quickly yep. in the game. I'm just going right after him. Well, we go to the uh, seventh inning, Mitch Moreland to start things off. And a new pitcher in for the Oakland A's. It's a left-hander, Fernando Abad. Nice job by Pat Venditti. Two and a third, a couple of walks, three strikeouts, no hits, no yeah. runs. First pitch to Mitch is a little bit low for ball one. Abad is 24th appearance of the year. Composition hitting 288 against the left-hander, just 13 and two-thirds innings in those uh, 23 previous appearances. Mitch saw something that stayed up a little bit and couldn't make contact. One ball and one strike. Moreland two for three tonight. Average at 313 for the season. Mitch 0 for 4 in his career against Abad. And he's down on the count here. One ball and two strikes. Well, our AT&T Universe Rewind from last night against Sonny Gray to dead central. Mitch Moreland hitting that about three quarters of the way up that batter's eye wall in dead center. If uh, Billy Burns hadn't tracked that carom down, it might have come back to second base. He's hit so hard. You know, Bolt going to go out and say something to Abad. Abad, the uh, veteran left-hander out there. Set now for the 2-2. Two -two. Three and two. Now Mitch leading off the seventh, trying to get aboard Joey Gallo. is waiting in that on-deck circle. Left-hander set, payoff pitch. Got him swinging. Got the fastball up, and Mitch couldn't catch up with it. One gone. With the uh, punch out now, Joey Gallo, who is two for three tonight, a pair of singles, and a strikeout last time. One ball, no strikes. Abad last year with the A's in 69 ball games. He had a two and four mark. Previously with uh, Washington Nationals, came up originally with the Houston Astros. Gallo, a fly ball to center. Didn't quite get all that, so Billy Burns able to camp underneath it. Two out. And Elvis Andrews will be next. Number one, Elvis Andrews. Elvis tonight has twice reached on a fielder's choice grounder. Also struck out 0 for 3. One ball, no strikes. That was two out of seven in the uh, previous matchups with Abad. Right center field, hanging up there for Reddick. Over into the gap, makes the catch, and Abad sends the Rangers down in order. It's stretch time in Oakland. Giovanni Gallardo going back out to the hill with a four to two lead.
Insurance MLB All-Star Game Ballot. Visit TexasRangers.com slash vote and vote for the Rangers as your favorite or second favorite team and you'll get an offer for 50% off select games in August or September. Head to the web and send Beltre and Fielder to the All-Star Game. Giovanni Gallardo back out to the hill and he gets a swinging strike from Max Muncy to begin things. But Gallardo has struck out four straight in retiring seven straight Oakland A's. It's Muncy tonight. An infield single and a ground ball to second. He's two runs on five hits. Rangers four runs, seven hits. Sam Freeman, the left-hander up and throwing in that Ranger bullpen in support of Giovanni Gallardo, who is about ready to make his 100th pitch of the night. A little bit low. Two and one. Evan Scribner, right-hander, throwing in the A's bullpen. Side three balls and a strike down. So is he trying to get aboard to start this seventh? Only one walk tonight by Giovanni Gallardo. That was back in the first inning. The three one hit hard, backhanded nicely by Adam Rosales. One gone. Marcus Simeon will be next before we tell you about him. Let's send it back to Rick Renner for a Mazda game break. Shortstop, number 10, Marcus Simeon. All right, Rick, thank you. Simeon oh. takes strike one. Marcus tonight, one for two. Singled his last time up. That was in the fourth. Rounded out to third in the second. That's yeah. out of play. Giovanni has gone seven innings one time earlier in the season. Updated standings in the American League West for you. Rangers a game and a half back. Pending the outcome tonight. Big thing, they are even with the Astros in that loss column. O2 pitch. Keone Kella has joined Sam Freeman down the range of pin. Back on May 13th, Giovanni went seven innings against the Royals. Most pitches he's thrown have been 118 back at the beginning of May. That was against Oakland. Yes, sir. Breaking ball. See you later. He's got it working, boy. Yeah. Drop that curveball, and that's the first one we've seen him throw for a strike in a couple of innings. Got a swing on one, but uh, that was a called strike. His ninth strikeout of the night. And prior to tonight, he had seven strikeouts against the Astros in his second start. That was his highest of the year, so he's got a great chance to tie his highest amount of innings and already has his most strikeouts in a start so far. Sam Fold, 0 for 2 this evening. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Jim Wolf down there at third, exercising that right fist. Fold is grounded out and struck out against Gallardo. Average at 182 for Fold. And he is down on the count, 0 and 2. Well, you can look at that 30 pitch first inning in the 24 pitch fourth, but primarily getting off that 30 pitch first. Since then, 78 pitches to work through almost six innings. Yeah, he's he's been at the top of his game. Gallardo, a long look in. Now he goes to the wind. The 0-2 pitch takes. Uh, some experience, some intestinal fortitude to make a comeback in a ball game after you get off to such a terrible start. Pitch one, pitch count. That yeah, definitely didn't look like seven innings after that no. first inning. 
call strike three. And he's maintained his fastball 92 with the last pitch. Ten strikeouts for Gallardo. And that is ten straight A sent down. 4-2 Rangers after seven. in Oakland. That's tomorrow afternoon. Then it's back home for three against the Twins, followed by two against the Dodgers before hitting the road again to Los Angeles and Chicago. Chicago to take on the White Sox. Our uh, Rangers upcoming schedule. Oakland comes in on that next home stand, 23rd through the 25th. Giovanni Gallardo and Robinson Torinos have been quite a tandem tonight. Boy, they have done Yeoman's work. Ten strikeouts tonight. The first ten strikeout game for Giovanni since September of last year. That came against uh, the Pirates last year, the 19th of uh, September. He had 11 in that ballgame. But tonight he has struck out six of the last seven that he has faced. And judging by the uh, congratulatory handshake that he's got from Mike Maddox, that's probably it. Probably it. Pretty good night's work. Evan Scribner, near the right-hander, on now. He will deal to Leonis Martin, bottom third of the Ranger order. Alex talking with uh, Giovanni Gallardo and uh, Giovanni explaining exactly what he what adjustments that he made. He's talking about being off balance just a little bit on his drive toward home plate, where he arched his back some, and that gets you off balance. And once he once he got that going, as you saw Mike Maddox indicate right there. Got that, that, that arm going down that straight line to home plate. Everything is on balance. And from there on, it was just a matter of repeating that and uh, executing your pitches. One and two the count to Leonis Martin, who is one for one tonight. Say one for one. He singled in the second, was hit by a pitch with the bases full in the third, so he got an RBI, and then walked in the fifth. Now 19 RBI for the season. Gifford misses with a breaking ball. The same curveball he laid off of with Jesse Hahn earlier in the ballgame. Two pitches after that, he was hit by a pitch with the bases loaded. Scribner back to the plate. Yeah, the owner sits right on the nose to center, going back as Burns. It's over his head. One hop and off the wall into second. And a hobble going in there, Leonis Martin. Well, that was a rope. Burns, Burns had his glove on the wrong side. He was gonna, wasn't going to catch that ball anyway. It was on the other side of him. That ball was hit directly over his head. Toughest play for a center fielder and hit about as hard as Leonis can hit a ball. Right down the middle of the plate and hit right back through the middle. Adam, Adam, 
Well, Leonis Martin, his second hit tonight, two for two. You can hang out some laundry on that thing. I guess so. Well, he is at second to lead off the eighth inning, and here's Adam Rosales. Leonis has had a double, a single, hit by pitch with the bases loaded and a walk, so he's been on all four times tonight. Rosales has walked. Rounded out a couple of times. Over for two. 237 the average facing uh, Evan Scribner. Showing bunt. He takes ball one. Rangers leading four to two. Rosales uh, probably charged with trying to get Leonis Martin over to third the best way possible. However, he thinks he can get that done. Takes that. Bun attempt and takes it outside. It's two and one. Again, looking down to Tony Beasley, the third base coach. Leonis Martin getting the sign out there at second. Both cornermen, as you can see, up at the cut of the grass or in, and a bunt down the first baseline is going to go off into foul territory. So it's two balls and two strikes. Adam Rosales, a former Oakland A, several times, as a matter of fact, in one year. Two years ago, Rangers and uh, A is kind of swapping Adam Rosales back and forth on waiver deals. Human yo yo going back and forth between the two of them. Now the 2 2 pitch. It should be deep enough to uh, get Martine over back. Is Sam full to the warning track? He makes the catch, tagging at second, coming to third, in with the slide. The owner's Martin. Well, that's better than a bunt. I'd rather hit that fly ball to the warning track than bunt it. Got a good swing. Almost got it up and off the wall. Couldn't get the bunt down, but he hit it far enough to get the guy <laughs> to third base. That will get the job done. Well, the owner's now just 90 feet away with one out. An important run out there. Rangers leading 4-2. They would love to have a, an extra run tacked on there. Robinson Chirinos at the plate. The infield will come all the way in to the cut of the grass. Chirinos has walked and scored, and twice he has flied out. One ball, no strikes. Facing Evan Scribner, the 29-year-old right-hander out of Connecticut. Originally, property of the uh, Padres. Claimed in 2011 off waivers by the A's. Check swing, it's a strike anyway. One and one. Freeman and Spencer Patton now going in that Ranger bullpen. Breaking ball by Stripper to the outside corner. Stripper has a good slider and a good curveball. Torino's 0 for 2 against Stripper, and the only bats he's had against the right hand. 1 and 2 the count. Got him swinging. Big strikeout for Stripper. Torino's can't put the ball in play. There are two outs now for Delano to Shields. A couple of good sliders away, and then the high fastball. Tough combination. And Scribner has pitched 32 innings, struck out 37 batters. The Shields has been on base three times tonight. Been on by an error, a walk, and a single. He takes that slow hook, catches the inside corner. 0 oh and 1. Infield now with two outs back to the normal depth. Delano down in an 0 2 hole after that swing. Delano settling back in the box. Stribner ready. One and two. 
Travis Martin trying to expand his uh, lead, at least his secondary lead down there in third. At least there's a pitch in the dirt and a chance to score. Popped up. Max Muncy in the foul territory, waiting for it to come down out of the night sky, and that will do it. Well, the Rangers waste an opportunity after Leros Martins lead off double. They strand him. Sam Freeman coming on. We'll be back to tell you about him in the bottom of the eighth. The Rangers leading four to two. As the Rangers out in front as we uh, now head to the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth inning, and we, of course, will do this all again one more time tomorrow when the Rangers play a day game against these very same A's. And how about Chichi Gonzalez, the rookie phenom, trying to keep that ERA at 0.00, the scoreless inning streak still alive. It's the longest ever to start a career in Rangers history. He's 2 0 against Scott Casimir, who you see has struggled a bit lately. ATT Uverse reminds you to watch. Watch that game tomorrow as we get to the bottom of the eighth, guys. All right, John, thank you. Well, Sam Freeman throws one pitch, and Billy Burns complies by getting a one hopper out to Adam Rosales for out number one. Sam Freeman appearing in his 13th ball game. No record of 540 ERA, eight and a third innings of work. Opposition in 267 against him. Sam's on a pretty good roll. Gotten his feet wet and getting used to pitching in critical situations like this. Two run lead, set up relief. He's on a pretty nice roll, throwing strikes and showing good velocity. And he's gaining confidence every time he goes out there now. He's dealing to Josh Reddick now, who has really struggled against left handers this year, hitting just barely over 100. It's six for 50. In fact, he's hitting so badly against lefties, he was pinch hit for last night, yeah. a critical part of the game. Yeah. 120 average. He only has four RBI this year against left-handed pitching. And Sam has fallen behind. Two balls and no strikes to Reddick. Ball three. Reddick hitting second of the order, trying to get aboard uh, Ben Zobris, switch hitting second baseman tonight. Will follow. Fastball down the middle. A walk, a walk right now is not what you want. It brings up the potential tying run. Make him swing the bat if he can. Oh boy. At the outside corner. Oh, it's three and two. Reddick one for three tonight. All of them against Giovanni Gallardo. And the payoff pitch. Hit hard to right. That's going to be in for a base hit. She cuts it off. And, okay. He made him swing the bat anyway. And give him credit.
got just his seventh base hit against left-handed pitching this year. Yeah, he didn't look like a guy who was six for 50 against left-handed pitching on that swing. Nope. The difference is he gets ahead 3-0. and oh. He knows Sam's going to throw him a fastball. He's looking fastball all the way. If different count, potential for a hard slider. Maybe you don't have quite the same swing, but he knew he was getting a fastball. He took advantage of it. Yeah, with one on and one out, uh, Jeff Bannister out to the mound. He is going to call for the right-hander Tanner Shepherds to come on in and face Ben Zobris. So Sam Freeman is uh, finished after a couple of hitters. He retires with Reddick aboard first at first, his responsibility. Pitching change underway here in Oakland. We'll be back to tell you about Tanner Shepherds right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Your attention, please. will face Ben Zobras with Josh Reddick at first in a 4-2 Ranger lead here in the eighth inning. Shepard's appearing in his 17th ball game. Saw Tanner last night. He worked the uh, ninth inning in that Ranger win. Uh, Tanner was exceptional in last night's ball game. Came in with a couple of men on, got a double play, and struck out Lowry to get out of the inning. Came in to get the save last night. Right. One ball and one strike. Is over. Dobris tonight, 0 for 3. RBI and a fielder's choice ground out back in the first. Reddick at first, Shepherds checks it. Pitch a little bit low, it's 2 and 1. Why the change, uh, Sam Freeman? We have a switch hitter. Well, Zobra is statistically much better from the right side, but this time he's able to pull it in the hole for the base hit. Going around to third is Reddick. Going to second with nobody there, the ball gets into right field. Up and scoring is Reddick. Over to third is Zobra as the Rangers throw the ball around. It's a 4-3. Ranger lead with a tying run at third base and one out. And two throws that should never have been made. Reddick is a good base runner. Chu had no chance to throw him out at third base. He airmailed the cutoff man. That let Zobris go to second. Joey got the throw from right field and threw it to second while the man covering second was on the dead run. There's Chu's throw. He had no chance to get him at third base. And now there's no one there. The throw is low. Rosales is on the run. And now you're in a heap of trouble. Well, that's going to be a single, no RBI, an error to allow the run to score. 
And to allow Zobris to go from second to third. And they're going to intentionally walk Stephen Vogt to set up a potential double play. Billy Butler coming up. And Butler is the guy last night that Tanner Shepard's got the uh, double play grounder from. So looking for a repeat tonight. And uh, you can see that as a skipper, not very pleased to see your ball club make uh, some fundamental mistakes. Yeah, it, it hasn't been a clean game for the Rangers tonight. They've given up several outs on the bases. A little sloppy here in the eighth inning. One thing wasn't sloppy was Giovanni Gallardo's seven innings. But trying to clean things up a little bit and see if they can't get out of the eighth inning. Yep. Marino's out there to uh, remind Tanner Shepard, hey, we made a pitch on this guy last night, got what we need tonight. Let's see if we can duplicate that. Butler this evening, 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts, and a fly ball to center field. They just play him a couple of steps around to the left of the infield. Elvis and Adam Rosales up a step, a double play down. One ball, no strikes. Butler, 11 ground ball double plays this year. That tied for the most. In the American League, he and Joe Mauer have each had that number. Tanner Shepard's looking to make that an even dozen. One and one. Shepard's the 28 year old right hander out of Mission Viejo, California. Takes the sign, he is set. Foul tip, it's one and two. But Tanner, nice, got some pretty good movement on that fastball. Yeah, not, not good bad, velocity. Not a bad place to keep it down there. Butler does make some contact, it'd probably be a ground ball. We have number three right there, sinking down out of the strike zone. Jeffers to the plate. If Elvis can get to it, they've got a shot. He can't. In to score is Zobras. And we've got a brand new ball game. It's tied at four. They got the ground ball. It just wasn't close enough for Elvis to be able to get to it and turn the double play. And Mike Maddox out to the mound. Nobody in the bullpen, so this is all Tanner Shepherds and the Oakland A's. You, you can't fault the pitch. The pitch was an excellent sinker, 94 miles an hour. Butler swung at it. He hit the ball that you hoped he would hit, Yep, a ground ball. Unfortunately, he just pulled it a little bit and got it by Elvis. But that was the pitch Tanner wanted to make. He made his pitch, just found a hole. And now Bob Melvin has gone to the bench and he's taken uh, Eric Sogard out to pitch run for Stephen Vogt at second base. So Sogard carrying the go ahead run in this ball game for the A's. The first and second still just one out here in the eighth inning. Brett Lowry 0 for 3 tonight. Couple of strikeouts and an RBI ground down. That breaking ball is tipped foul for strike one. But three hits and an intentional walk, an error in the inning. These have come back to tie this ball game at four. Threatening to take the lead. So guard at second, Butler at first. Lowry wagging that bat back and forth as Shepard sets. 
Nothing in two. Good combination. Slider waved at it. Fastball wasn't ready for it. There are your A's runners. Butler trailing, trailing Sogard. One ball and two strikes. Lowry, 24 RBI this year. Average currently at 276. Jeffers, a check of the runners back to the plate. Sky the left center field. Here's Martin over to make the call and the catch. That is out number two. And that'll be Max Muncy coming up. Now batting first baseman, number 50, Max Muncy. Breaking ball, the pretty good hitter's location. Lowry got underneath it. Max Muncy, the uh, Texan, on here. Runners at first and second, two outs. Muncy one for three tonight. Towering fly ball to right. It's carrying. Chu is back at the wall and makes the catch as he jumps up against the padding to haul it in. Now Muncy gave it a ride, but it comes up short. The A's, however, tie the ball game. They get two runs on three hits and lead two. We're going to the ninth, deadlocked at four. It is Giovanni Gallardo, seven outstanding innings tonight, his longest of the year. Five hits, two runs, one walk, and a season-high ten punch-outs against Oakland. And after the first inning, he had the entire game completely in hand. Unfortunately, after he left the ball game, it's kind of fell apart for the Rangers. Now, Tyler Clippard now, the uh, closer for Oakland will take over here in the top of the ninth and work to the Rangers. He'll face Chu, Fielder, and Moreland. A 4-4 ball game. Josh Fagley behind the plate now, taking over for Stephen Vogt. Shinsu Chu is one for three this evening. Clifford comes in with strike one. Clifford throws a lot of changeups. That first pitch to Chu was a changeup. Shinsu's single came back in the fourth inning. And he pops one high in the air. That's twisting into foul territory. 
full of a long run into the Oakland bullpen. Out number one. No Chu fouls out. Well, with uh, Prince Fielder coming up, I'm going to remind you that on Tuesday, June 23rd, the first 15,000 fans will receive a Prince Fielder bobblehead. That's courtesy of Dr. Pepper and Brookshire's. Don't miss the first bobblehead giveaway of the season. Head to TexasRangers.com slash tickets, or you can call 972-RANGERS. Prince looking for his first hit tonight. He is 0 for 2. Takes strike one. Fielder a sacrifice fly in the third inning, driving in his 42nd run of the year, hit by a pitch in the fourth. Other than that, he has uh, struck out and grounded out. Fielder two for seven in his career against Clipper. Oh, and two. Clipper's got the kind of changeup that. He's got such good arm action with it. He's thrown a couple of them belt high, and hitter still hasn't been able to make contact with it. Bridge just protecting the dish and uh, fights it off foul. That 92 mile an hour fastball's got to look like about 190 after the changeup. Yeah, it's a tough combination. Still no balls and two strikes. Clippard reading fake lead signs. Check swing just outside. Got to be careful with that off speed pitch if he gets it down around the knees. When Prince was hot with the long ball, that's that's pitch he was hitting on a regular basis. Yep. Off speed pitch down. Got him swinging. And with a high changeup. That one was up and Clippard has two outs. Base is empty, and uh, now Mitch Moreland will come up. Mitch, two for four tonight. A pair of run scoring singles. He also has struck out and flied out. Average at 310. He has faced Clifford one other time and uh, drew a walk. One ball, no strikes. Clipper the last several years with Washington Nationals. As a matter of fact, he was their closer back in 2012. He had 32 saves for him. One and one. Clipper traded over here to Oakland. Now Escobar went over to uh, Washington. One ball and one strike. Another high twisting foul ball. Right on the line now and uh, just in fair territory. Bull puts it away. Rangers gone in order. Clifford sends the Rangers down in the ninth. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Rangers four A's four.
Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By AT&T U-verse TV. U-verse has more live TV channels on the go than cable. And by your Texas Ford dealer. Visit your Texas Ford dealer now for great deals on America's best-selling brand. Ford is the best in Texas. 22-year-old right-hander Keone Kella on here to pitch the bottom of the ninth inning. Marcus Simeon to start things off. And uh, Keone drops in that hook for strike one. Keone appearing in his 28th ball game. Last time we saw him was uh, Sunday in Kansas City. Took the loss, giving up the home run to Salvador Perez in the eighth inning. Semyon one for three tonight. And a single back in the fourth inning. Kella, what quick reaction to get to that ball. Just picked it right off his left shin. One gone. Sam Fold coming up. Let's uh, send it back to Rick Renner right now for a preview of Rangers Live. Rick. Now batting left fielder. 23. Sam Fold 0 for 3. Lays down a bunt that pushes it foul. And it is 0 and 1. So Fold will make his way back to home plate. Hits are even in this game at 8. Runs are even at 4. Rangers with 2 errors. The A's with 1. Keone Kellogg peering in for the sign. He is ready to work. 0-1 pitch coming. Sam Fold currently a 181 hitter. He's got a good assortment of pitches. He's got the, the curveball, the changeup now, and 96, 97 mile an hour fastball. That's straight down breaking, down breaking curveball. Nightmare for a hitter. Poke through the left side, a base hit for full. That, that one stayed up, yeah. That was not where he was trying to throw that one. You get him to swing at it if you throw it down in the dirt, but that one hung. Fold was just able to kind of get the bat on it. Throw that ball down, bottom of the strike zone. Doesn't have the same good fortune. So the winning run aboard for the Oakland A's with one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And now the top of the order is... Who uh, Keone's going to have to deal with? Billy Burns, one for four tonight. Fold with pretty good speed at first. Kellum misses low and outside for ball one. Burns' base hit came way back in the first inning. The infield single. Bull inching off the bag. Back. Full three stolen bases in four attempts this year. Hayes have been moderately successful. They've done 33 out of 40 as a team. One ball and no strikes to Billy Burns. Now Kellis set. On the outside.
inside corner. Fastball, it's one and one. Contact, but it's a foul ball. Yeah, Fold had a good jump. He didn't need any help. Now Bob Melvin going out there to ask exactly what happened. See if that definitely might have hit his glove. With bat. Oh, with a glove, I don't know. And now they're going to ask home plate umpire Adrian Johnson to uh, have a little. Conference with the rest of the umpires to see if that might have been catcher's interference. And generally, if it is, the hitter kind of reacts to it. Let's see. He, he looked like he threw his bat and it hit the glove and the ball. Yep. And that's what they're discussing right now. You can kind of read Adrian Johnson's lips and something about the bat. There's no way that can be better. There's no way that that can be catcher's interference if you throw the bat. By the time that bat hits the glove, it's out of his hand. He doesn't even have the bat in his hand. You know, Bob Elvin getting the ruling from uh, Adrian Johnson. So. Going to go as a foul ball. It's two balls and two strikes now. Full back to first base. Billy Burns back in there awaiting the pitch from Keone Kella. Full again going, and the pitch is slapped out of play. Full getting a couple of pretty good jumps. First one to hit and run, the second one to run and hit. Difference being when there's two strikes, the hitter's not obligated to swing at the pitch. If it's a strike, he is. Fold again, establishing a pretty good lead. Kella checks him. And Burns fouling the pitch off. This year, 23 strikeouts in 142 at bats. He's had a lot of swings for those pitches. Yeah, he sure has. <laughs> and then one pitch near the strike zone. Kella testing the patience of the. Uh, a little better than 14,000 fans on hand tonight. <laughs> Put a few more over the edge. Yeah, I don't think he's too worried about him. I don't either. Two and two with one out. Winning run at first base in the bottom of the ninth inning. About three more of those in a row, we might have a revolt on our hands. It's all right. Keone again has the sign. There goes full. The pitch is high and outside. The throw to second he is not in time. That face was stolen before Robinson threw the ball. Yep. 
He got rid of it quickly, made a strong throw right on the bag. Keone is a little bit deliberate to the plate, and I think Fold had pretty good confidence at first base that he could get a jump. And he got the jump, and he was in there in spite of the good throw. Sure was. Right where it needed to be. And now, uh, Jeff Banners is saying, okay, let's have a look at that from our perspective. We want to challenge touch, that play at second. Touched him in the like the middle of his body. Did he touch him before his hand touched the bag to the well, naked eye? Didn't look like yeah, it. Yeah, that's going to be the question. That they have a, a shot at this. The throw was toward first base, which is where it needed to be if you're going to get him out. But the hands are there before the tag is applied. Unless he came off the bag sometime during that slide. Doesn't appear that the Rangers would win that challenge. But we've been wrong before on that. So again, the crew chief, Bill Miller, and uh, second base umpire, Doug Eddings, with the headsets on in contact with Replay Command Center in New York. And the uh, ruling on the field was safe. And to overturn that, you need clear and convincing video evidence that the call was not correct. An excellent throw by Robinson. He got something on that throw pretty much right where he wanted to throw it. Umpire in charge of uh, reviewing the plays from this game. Taking a look at the, the various angles. And now has issued his ruling, and the uh, ruling is safe at second base. A full with the stolen base that stands, and uh, the call stands. And the call, as we understand now, is confirmed. Well, the winning run at second base now. Three and two, the count to Burns. A little chopper. Again, he almost going to have to hurry. And he has no play at first and wisely checked third. The pull did not round the bag far enough to award a throw from Elvis. And there are runners at the corners with just one out and Josh Reddick coming up. Well, that's the speed of... Uh, Billy Burns making that play. Elvis had a similar play back in the fifth inning, and he was able to make the play. Ball was hit a little bit harder than that. That time it was just like a swinging bunt toward shortstop. Burns is out of the box running right off the bat. Elvis knew he had no play, didn't even think about making a play, hoping that the runner at second would round third, which he didn't. Well, Mike Gallego, the third base coach, did everything but walk over there and tackle him, make sure he stayed on the bag. Well, Mike Maddox out to the mound and uh, discussing the options now. You you have a base open, even though it's second base. It doesn't really matter here in the bottom of the ninth. The winning run is at third. So it doesn't really matter what else you do. If you don't want to pitch to Reddick, if you would prefer to walk him and pitch to Zobris with the bases full, then that's certainly one of the options. Zobris, as we mentioned, uh, coming off the disabled list just two weeks ago. He's been struggling a little bit offensively, although tonight both uh, Reddick and Zobers singled their last times up. That was in the eighth inning. Now we'll see what the Rangers elect to do with Reddick up there. Torino's back down behind the plate. The infield all the way in Have to cut off the winning run, if at all possible. Reddick two for four tonight. Ground ball smothered. Coming home, the throw is late. And the A's walk off with a win. And Rosales could not get the ball to home plate quite quickly enough. And Reddick with the RBI on a ground out. The A's win it five to four. Coming back with two runs in the eighth to tie it. And one run in the bottom of the ninth to walk off with the victory. A 
Josh Reddick with his RBI is 33rd of the year. Drives in Sam Fold with a winning run from third base. Rangers uh, did everything they possibly could to defend that, and uh, the ball just not hit close enough to Adam Rosales to allow him to catch it and remain on his feet. He had to smother it with a full out dive, and by the time he scrambled back up, it was too late to get full. There have been some ground balls hit when you don't mind a ground ball being hit. Butler hit one earlier in the game to drive in a run, but it wasn't right at Elvis, couldn't turn the double play. That one, if it's right at him, you've got a great shot at the plate. Unfortunately, it's a little bit to the left. A couple of ground balls at the right time, but the wrong location, wrong spot. Nothing Adam could do on that one. So the A's come back to tie it in the eighth, win it in the ninth. This series is now even at one game apiece. We'll come back to wrap things up from Odonto Coliseum right after this.